Hey everybody, it's Riblet back again. All right, this is a super short, what's going on here? A super short, super easy section, thank God. However, the theory behind it is a little bit nasty. Now, I have not given you guys an opportunity, <clears throat> excuse me, for a little bit of extra credit. This isn't a ton of extra credit, but what I want you to do is I want you to go into the book in this section on surface area of a surface, strangely enough, you know, this guy right here is z equals f of x, y. And I want you to check it out. I want you to look at the proof. And there's a couple of things. It's not a very difficult proof, but I want you to sort of fill in the blanks. Uh, again, our author, fantastic author, has a tendency to skip some parts of his proofs um, in this, in these later chapters. So I want you to fill in the blanks in your notes, and I'll give you one extra credit point in your note. Okay, now here's what I want to do. I'm going to write how to find the surface area. I'm just going to give you the formula. We're not going to go into the proof. I'm going to give you a real quick basic idea of how a form, how these things work. But what, all that we do when we figure out the surface area, it's kind of akin, if you think about it, it's akin to taking an arc length and the formula behaves accordingly. So instead of taking, remember how arc length worked? We took little segments of length along the curve and we ended up with the formula. Remember for, well, I'm not going to rewrite it. You've seen it a thousand times. Instead, what we do here is we pick a point down in the domain. We map that point onto the surface and then we take a little teeny tiny slice of a tangent plane. So that tangent plane, this plane is tangent to this, to this uh, surface, and then we find the area of that. And then very predictably, let's put a little thing down here, very predictably what we do is we count up an, uh, an infinite number of infinitely thin slices of area. Now, for counting up area, we can't just count up linear units, can we? We have to use our double integral. So I will get you started. All right, the ugly, ugly, if we're just doing this with a Riemann sum, the way that this thing is written, just so that you can see it, is limit as m and go to infinity of the sum as i goes from 1 to m of the sum as j goes from 1 to n. That's a 1, by the way. Uh, now, this delta t sub ij. Now, what I want you to do is figure out what this delta t sub ij is in relation to what I've just shown you. That's what I'm talking about. That's the proof that I want you to do in your notes. I'll give you one extra credit point for your notes, and then every extra credit point matters. Okay, however, that said, if I want to write this thing as an integral, what I want to add is the double integral over d of the square root of, now here's where it gets kind of fun. This is going to be the partial with respect to x of f of x, y. This guy is squared plus the partial with respect to y of x, y. This guy is squared plus 1, and then we've got dA, or delta A, excuse me. All right, now, if that doesn't smell like an extension in the third, in the three space of the arc length, I don't know what does, okay? <clears throat> excuse me. Now, this dA, we got, or excuse me, this delta A, and these guys, we got to be really careful of, right? Because we're going to have limits on this integral. And it all depends on how we want to write this guy. If I want to write it as dx, dy, I got to make sure that my limits on my integral are x on the inside, y on the outside. Likewise, if I'm going to do it dy over dx, I got to be really careful. Now, we also have sort of this interesting little quiver of tools that we can use. Remember, we can convert to polar any time that we want. And that can be actually pretty helpful when we're dealing with these. Again, I just want you to have this formula, all right? Um, again, in the book, let me make sure you get the other guy. The other way to write this, of course, is the double integral over d. I want to be consistent. And then we got this little dz over dx. Uh, and we're going to square that sucker. Plus, let me extend this. D, these are partials, of course, right? Uh, you want, whoops, that should be a z. That guy's going to be squared. Z! Uh, and then plus 1. And then this is delta a. Or, sorry, delta A, what the heck, DA. Did I write delta A in both of those? Because I'm a moron. DA and DA. 
because I'm taking an integral. Remember, deltas become d's. Now, again, for your extra credit, I want you to make this relationship. How do I get from delta t to dA? Something weird's going on, like I'm taking the sum, I'm adding up a whole bunch of, so this must be, the, oh, it's t, so it's probably tangent plane. I'm adding up a bunch of tangent planes um, in both direct, wait, what? Oh, I gotta build a rectangle or a square, something like that. I just want you to play with it. If you want the extra credit, you can have it. If you don't, all you gotta do is remember these two formulas. And then of course, remember how double uh, uh, integrals work. Hopefully that was enjoyable for you. It was brief, if nothing else. Have a great night and I'll see you.